Hello and welcome to a compositing tutorial on After Effects in Cinema 4D. If you would like to follow along, visit my page for footages and source files. So yeah, welcome to Cinema 4D. If this is your first time here, you're gonna use Cinema 4D. I'm using Cinema 4D R15 and um, this is definitely not a beginner tutorial like interface and stuff but I'm just gonna go dive in directly into what you need to do because I believe you can use the same technique even in 3D Studio Max or Maya or any other software but um, I'm gonna use Cinema 4D because I'm really comfortable with this software and uh, yeah so the first thing that we need to know is some really basic stuff for example I'm just gonna create a um, a box all right I'm just gonna make sure that I have my um, guru shading so basically this is a box and if I try to render it's gonna be as simple as that all right but what we need to do um, in our um, example is that we need to try to find out um, how to create as you can see this really nice specular going on right there and um, yeah this kind of highlight that is going on we need to know how to how to get this kind of lines so by just rendering like that that is not possible the only way for us to get that is that if we activate the fillet but of course it's quite too fat now not that I have things against fat people but um, it's just that it's really not helping us at all here so as you can see here we have already that small highlight all right and of course the bigger we go the fatter they are all right cool so um yeah i'm just gonna get back to one um yeah that's 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 just the first thing now the second thing that you need to know about this um is that for example if i tried um to create a plane all right, which is cool. We have a cube and we have a plane, and that's really um, primitive, <laughs> so primitive. Um, if I try to render, so basically it's very simple. It's very dull. There is no shadow. There is really nothing going on here. So um, yeah, so it's pretty, um, it's pretty primitive, as I said. Now, if we want to get shadows and if we want to get really um, nice renders, we need to use, you know, some light. And uh, if I just try to bring this light here and try to render, quite beautiful, but yeah, there is no shadows. And that's because our shadow here is none, because we don't want to see shadows, because um, some people don't want to go shadow, sometimes, uh, yeah, it's just hard to render, or sometimes you just don't want to create shadow with this light, maybe you want to create it with another light, so um, yeah. so. The thing is, um, this is it. Now we have our object lighten up and we have our specular, which is cool. We have our highlight, rather. So that's cool. But the thing is, what if, what if we could learn a bit more? I'm saying specular, I'm saying highlight, I'm saying stuff. So what am I talking about? What I'm talking about is these two things right here. Diffuse a specular. This is what you need to pay attention to for now. Cool. So what is diffuse? Diffuse is when your light pay attention to the color and to the property of the object. So basically when we render, we can see the color of the object. We can see the object itself. It's the object is lit in. All right? But if I take off the diffuse and try to render Exactly. I only have specular and this is specular. Specular is basically just the highlight and just the reflection of the light on the object. So if I try for example to you can see this is how far the object is for example. See that? And that's how far the object is. So the more I get closer the more the specular gets higher. See that? So yeah. And in the same way, if I put diffuse and I take off specular, basically I'm gonna see the object lit up and the color and everything, but then I'm not gonna see that highlight. 
Hence, I'm also going to use that small highlight that I had before. All right. So if I put specular, now I'm going to see pretty much cool stuff. We have the diffuse, which is the color of the object. And then we have the highlight specular. Are we good? Beautiful. Hopefully. Um, that's um, pretty much it. Now, let's talk a bit about shadows. Now, um, doing shadows is also really important in this um, in this project because we need some really soft shadows and it shouldn't be really hard. So basically on your light, you do have um, shadow here, okay? And if we turn it on, we have three shadows. Um, you can experiment with them later on but for now let's see the first one shadow maps and it's gonna be soft and that's exactly what we want all right um let me just get this guy a bit down all right so this is it now let's see what's the difference between shadow map soft and hard and as the name says we're gonna have a hard one basically it's like we don't have a gradient of shadow you see it's just super like a fill it's 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 super strong there is no gradient whereby if i go and do a shadow map soft i'm gonna have this realistic gradient here which is quite cool all right it's beautiful and um yeah this is pretty much it cool and of course if you move your um if you move your light yeah the shadow is gonna change all right, and if you get really closer, yeah, cool. And I can change the intensity of the light by playing with the intensity right here. If I want to increase more, like sunlight, angel light, yeah, there we go. This is quite cool, actually. No, it's not. All right, cool. Um, more than that, um, sometimes you don't want to light up everything, you know, you don't really want to light up everything, but you just want to light up a certain area, you know. So to do that, we need to go to detail and um, we're going to change the fall off to inverse square. And that will create a light with a kind of aura. All right, now the aura is pretty much, as you can see, is covering this thing now if we try to decrease the aura see that if we try to increase that's what's going on so if I put it like this and then I try to get it closer that's what's gonna happen I have to get it really close so that I can see the object or else I can't see it because it doesn't fall under this area that's why it's called a fall off it doesn't fall under it meaning that only what falls under this spectrum right here and this area whatever they call it will be lightened up and will be taken into consideration all right cool so this is when it comes to light and um, shadows cool now on the next part, we're going to try it, um, to explain other techniques that we're going to use before we start recreating and creating the scene. Alright, so I'll see you in the next part.